everyone and welcome back. This is Curio Yarns Podcast, or The Curio Yarns Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Exeter, here in the heart of Devon, in England. Um, today is episode 25 and it is Friday the 8th of November. Um, now today I'm going to be recording in two parts. Um, you would notice but I'm going to be. (laughs) Um, Partly because my youngest daughter is due to come home um, at some point soon and I won't be finished recording until she gets home, or before she gets home. So, for returning viewers, it has been nearly two months, was it eight weeks since my last episode? I'm really sorry. Um, What can I say? A lot of things happened. And I needed to just step back and um, deal with things. So, uh, let's see. um, Cura Yarns has gone up. And my other job has gone down. (laughs) And we'll just leave it at that. Um, I have completely redone this room. This is... This was my craft slash workroom. It's now my office with my craft supplies. So I try not to do any of my personal crafting in here other than spinning. Um, I mean, it, if I'm editing the podcast or whatever, I will do knitting. Um, but it's pattern design knitting. So, um, you know, things that I'm designing, not things that I'm working from other people's designs. I am trying to make this space more work, not play. Um, And it's working. I am getting a lot more done, as you will see. (laughs) So, um, I will say I was meant to be doing a Halloween episode, but that got by the by. But I did record the display because I've completely swapped sides of the room. I used to face that way when recording and you guys would see that wall that I'm now looking at so I've done a 180 but I recorded um, on the units behind me my Halloween display so I will insert that for you here just to show you guys here is my Halloween shelf so this is what you see behind me when I'm recording (gasps) I love all my Halloween stuff, isn't it cute? And which one is it? This pussy cat over here. When I switch on, the eyes light up in the lantern. These are my beautiful glass plates. This is a flat one. And there's a bowl one. Isn't it lovely? Right, back to me. See, it was really pretty. Um, Very warm (laughs) because of all the candles. Um, But all of that is now gone. The only things I have in here now are the glass plates and one candle holder. Just look around. Well, my raven picture's still more, but it's up there. Um, Yeah, the rest is all gone because it's no longer Halloween. It's November. I like Halloween. For me, it's Halloween all year round, you know, goth, etc. So, I'm just going to take a sip of my my tea, because I've got a really dry throat. I've borrowed my daughter's straw, so I don't have to keep slurping out the cup, because it gets really noisy. Because there's the whole... (laughs) Because it's one of those slide tops. Okay, so, on with today's show. You can find me as Curio Yarns on my Etsy shop. On Instagram, on Ravelry, and I have a Facebook group called Curio Yarns. So um, I'm not very active on Ravelry. I'm I, I'm making it sort of a, a November resolution to become more active on Ravelry, um, especially in the group. I won't be there every day, but I will be there two or three times a week. So I will, you know, be there to sort of see what's being said and comment and everything else, especially because of the cow. Uh, you can buy my yarns, project bags and fibre on the Curo shop. And also you can buy my yarns on the Facebook group. 
and hopefully by the end of this week, so by the end of the weekend, um, you will now be able to direct buy from my Instagram feed, which is brilliant. So, yes, all very exciting stuff. Okay, so in today's show, I am starting with spinning and then doing knitting and then doing shop talk. So if you don't like shop talk, you don't have to watch, it's at the end. Um, but I'd be very grateful if you do, because even if you're not interested, tell someone else because they might be interested, and that would be fantastic. Share the word. Okay, so spinning on my wheel, which is here. You can see this lovely piece of fluff. I am spinning this. Now, this I bought at the Craft Crafters Fair two years ago. Yes, because um, I didn't go last year. Or this year even. Now this I bought from a lady called, or oh, her brand is Jill I Am. Um, now it's predominantly meant for felting, but it can also be used for spinning. I didn't realise when I bought it that it had been cut. See, it's actually been cut with scissors. Mm, no. Don't ever cut fibre. I don't care for what reason. Don't cut it. Because that now means that that whole chunk there, you know, which is a good four inches of staple, is no good. Because it's not the correct staple length. And although I managed to use it, it was a struggle. That first half an hour trying to get this bit to be the right length. I mean, look, some bits, they're even shorter than cotton. Now, yeah, it was difficult. Um, but it is beautiful and I bought it because I wanted to do a two ply so I've bought four of these I have the other ones on the wheel itself down there you can't quite see the pedals so I'm I'm spinning two onto one bobbin and then two onto the other bobbin and doing a two ply I'm just gonna see how much I've got um, I haven't done a traditional two ply ever and that hit me when I was going through my um, my hand spun Sorry, someone's about to come and knock on my door. It's the Labour Party. They can go away. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't want to do politics on the podcast. Um, so no, yes, I have done a two ply, but only where you do a centre pull ball and you ply from both ends. I've never done two separate strands on two separate bobbins to make one. So this is actually a first for me. So I'm really excited and it's so sparkly and black and grey so me I love it absolutely love it so I finished plying the light as a feather bump from loop I haven't finished the excess that I still have in the bag on the spindle but this one I think was 650 yards um, was it 670? It was a lot of a Navajo ply and it's very, very fine. I can't take it too close because of the lighting. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a lace weight. There's a, some of the grey um, here. Um, that has plumped up more than the other colours. And I don't know if that's because of the dyeing or whatever. Um, but it means it goes from a very fine lace weight to a very to a, a light fingering weight, shall we say? But it's absolutely beautiful. And at some point, this will be a shawl. I'm not sure what shawl, but it will be. So that is now going to go in my cubby hole where all my hand dies go. My not my hand dies, my hand spun, which is on that side. See. I don't even know anymore because I've rearranged everything and it's only been a week so I'm not used to it yet. So I'll pop that in my basket down there. So when I'd finished that, I did go back and finish uh, spinning and then plying the yarn, the fibre that I got as a Christmas present from Abby's parents. So here it is on the bobbin. And it's sort of, it's greys and pinks. And it is a mixture of linen, flax, merino and silk, I think. That 
that's what it looks like. Um, it was very tricky to spin. It was beautiful, don't get me wrong. The bits that were just merino and silk draft like a dream. But when you add in the flax and the linen, that doesn't do much. So having to space it out so that it was spun evenly, it got quite chunky in places in some of the plies. So although I Navajo plied it, it's trying to even it out a bit. Some of it's absolutely perfect and some of it is an absolute nightmare. Um, I don't even know where the end's gone. I will have to find it. Let's see. Da, da, da. It's there somewhere. I'll find it when I come to measure it. So I will measure that and wash it and let you know the yardage next week because that is going to be part of a jumper. So let's see if I can get it close without going to... You see there, the pink is the linen. So I'll put that back there. So that is my spinning for this week. Okay, so the next part that I want to talk to you about is patterns that I am designing myself. And I have two that I'm currently working on. I have got a lot more, um, but it's a case of I'm designing them and doing the swatches faster than I can actually knit them because my brain is so busy all the time um, I flip <laughs> I just flip, I'm a butterfly I'm a black butterfly but I'm a butterfly mm -hmm. right so which first green or purple, green or purple I'm going to say purple okay so a long time ago I'm going to say six years I got some Aracania silk yarn that is completely discontinued and I got the end of a run and it was this weird raspberry colour but it wasn't it wasn't pretty it wasn't as nice as the photos online anyway nowhere near what I thought I was getting was more of a mauve colour and it ended up being this um, dirty raspberry as opposed to a pretty mauve so I over dyed it and then I over dyed it again so I would get this beautiful colour. So this is 100% silk, ignore the grey bits, that's just where my dye tags up. This is 100% silk, it is a sport weight and it is 320 metres of skein. So I'm using this, I have it here, started, to design a jumper. A jumper that I really want to wear and I can't wait to finish it. This jumper has been in my mind for a couple of years and I took the plunge last month to actually start writing it and then literally a couple of weeks ago I was on my uh, craft biz group on Facebook which is run by Sarah Millis who's my indie life and she was like just go for it. So, I am, yeah, this is the beginning of my design. <laughs> now I did swatch, but then I had to undo the swatch, so I'll put in a photo of the swatch here so you can see. Now, I had to undo the swatch purely for yardage sakes, because what I didn't want to happen was that I got to sort of two inches from the end of the sleeve and ran out. I was like, no. So, I am using size four and four and a half mil needles on this and it's got design at the bottom and then on the cuffs and around the neck um, but that's all I'm going to tell you because I don't want to give you any secrets but this is my pattern now Paper Chase a while ago sold sets of these Let's see little books and each one of these has got two patterns in that I've designed. Um, purely because it means that it will fit in my project bag. I don't need to worry about typing things up all the time or, you know, whatever. I just write it out in here as it comes to me so I can make changes as I'm going along. And then, you know, I have this to sort of write the whole pattern out from onto my computer without being flipping through lots of pages of A4 and, 
you know, different files and things. And it also means that if I, um, you know, take particular photos, I can write the corresponding photo ID next to the bit I want to talk about in the pattern. See? It works. Anyway, at the moment it's living in my yarn bowl by Barantando Ceramics. Which Abby got me for Christmas last year. It's a bat. It's an albino bat or albino, however you want to say it. Abby laughs at me because I say albino or albino. I can't remember. It's confusing now I see both ways together. Um, I absolutely love this. It's really cute. I have to be really careful with these bits. I've not broken it yet. So, yes. so there we go. So this pattern will be suitable for silk, I would imagine cotton, um, linen, any yarn that doesn't have lots of stretch in it. It has to be a plant fibre or silk fibre heavy base. So if you have a merino silk 50-50 sort of thing, I think that would be fine. Um, I am going to be knitting it again using my yarns, which are here. This is one of the cubby holes for my, my work yarns, Curie yarns. Um, I will be knitting it again in another colour. I just haven't chosen which yet. Because I want you guys to see it in a semi-solid, so like these. These are just over -dyed. And then in one of my yarns. So you can see and imagine in your head how it would look in one of my yarns. Because I dye in a certain style. So, yeah. Right. The kids are starting to walk up the road from school. <laughs> so my other design is using um, Adrafil Monello Trends which is also accidentally another discontinued yarn. You see sometimes I buy yarns knowing I want to design something because I can't find a pattern I like, start doing the knitting and be like so before I publish this pattern, I will find another yarn that is the same um, weight that gets the same gauge. I promise. So it is Monello colour 062 and the colour is 0818. And it's a 55% wool, 45% acrylic. And it is 50 metres to 50 grams. There we go. So, this is a 8 and 10 millimeter needle job. And I'm nearly done with the body. It's a it's it's an off the shoulder jumper. So it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I wanted to have something cuz you know what it's like you feel really cute when you have an off the shoulder jumper and it's sort of you've got your little vest on or whatever. And it's it's big and cozy, but at the same time you feel like I like it. <laughs> So I wanted to make one. So this is the start. I say the start. It's the body, the yoke, and the sleeves are on holders. And then I'm down to if I push my chair back and stand up. And down to there. So I've got a little bit more to go before I do the edging. And then it'll be sleeve island. But it's so quick to knit, and I love how this is knitting up. Isn't that gorgeous? It's greens and blacks. See, I have most colours when it's with black, except orange and yellow. No. No. Rust, yes. Autumn leaves, yes. My druid colour, gorgeous. Orange, orange, and yellow. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Now I do have some Debbie Bliss, is it Rialto? Reva, that um, I'm tempted to try and swatch to see if I can get the same gauge. Because this is a thick and thin yarn, I'm going to wrap some around my fingers so that you can see it. Um, it's made it a bit of a nightmare actually getting gauge, just because of that, but what I did was I did a double gauge, so I did a 20 centimetre gauge swatch. So if you can see, so this is thick, this is thin, thick, medium, thin, thick. But it works out. 
it's fantastic. I love it. It's soft. Um, it's going to be a, um, a struggle to hand wash. But luckily I've got a, a, a white light spinner. So that is what I use for all my yarns. So um, since I've got it, all my hand knits go in there and yes, it's brilliant. Gets it all water. Right, so... Those are my two designs that I am showing you, and I will show them again when they're completed. But, now this is the big bit, I can't publish them until I have test knitters. So, if you are interested in knitting either one of those jumpers, please let me know. They both range from a 28 to a 60 inch bust, because I want to be as inclusive as I can, as I've said before in the past. Um, they are very simple, um, you know, patterns, um, <clears throat> and I think that they are relatively, I'd say they're beginner to intermediate level for knitting. So if you're an advanced beginner and you want to do, you know, your first jumper or whatever, this one is for you, you know. And then the purple one, the green one, um, it's very simple, but it is a yoke. So you need to take that into consideration and know how to do, you know, separating sleeves and things like that. But the more the merrier. Please send me a message or leave a comment down below here with your, you know, with a, your Instagram name so we can talk. Fab. Okay, it's 3.30. Um, I'm going to keep going because I can see now. Is she's walking up the road and she's not so moving on I had um, let's see knitting wise I have got four other knitting projects to show you today um, and I'm gonna start with this one because it's closest so this is in my Christmas bag by Mina Mina makes who's Mina Philip who is knitting expat who does an amazing podcast, and at the moment she's doing all about spinning, and I'm loving it. Hi, Mina. Um, so this is the Metal Heart Shawl by Caitlin French. I absolutely love it. There it is. And since last time, I've put a small dent in it. Um, oh, my cat's in the road. She's okay. So I have done a couple of inches. So I'm now so close to doing the edge, it's, it's, oh, it's painful. I want to do it. I want to get there. Um, it's relatively quick, except for one row in the pattern, which you have to really concentrate on. But that's cool. So, this is using my Curio Yarns in Poison, which is the black, and Venomous Kiss, which is sort of teal colour. Ta -da! And it's got this lovely spine in the middle. So yeah, that is going to look a lovely. In fact, I might wear it with this cardigan because it's so cute. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And the edge is going to be black lace. So it's going to be beautiful. So I'm using on this long needle Chowgu US size seven, which is a four and a half millimeter, and it's the red lace, which means it's the red wire. Red plastic coated wire. But yeah. So that is the poison. Mm. And a venomous kiss. So there we go. Pop that back in there. Mm -mm. Okay, next up. Abby socks. I finally have picked up Abby socks again. Now these are knit living in my knitting goddess bag, and it's this linen beauty, and it is using my Nonata's house colorway, which is from called Midwives. Now, as I said, if it comes on again this Christmas, I will be putting this colorway up for pre-orders, so that I'm not just dying a load, and I'm not selling. So if you want some, um. There will be pre-orders starting um, as soon as the Radio Times, which is 
the TV Guide in England basically, says it's coming on this Christmas. <laughs> so keep an eye out on the Radio Times if in England. If not, let me know if you hear that it is coming on and provide proof and I'll put up the listing. <laughs> so, sock one is pretty much done. I'm on the ribbing, people. I'm on the ribbing. Now these are bigger than I have my socks because Abby, Abby last year, I've knit Abby quite a few pairs of socks, but last Christmas I knit her dad, her mum and her sister some socks. Now she made the mistake, <coughs> excuse me, of trying on the ones I did for her dad. Now his feet are slightly bigger. He's got quite petite feet for a gentleman. So she made, she tried them on and she loved how they fit. So now I have to do all of her socks the same size. So that's why it's taken a while because it's like, oh, extra stitches, extra length, extra rows, but it's so cool. Because it's Nanata's house. Mm -mm -mm. So, oh, I just slipped backwards. Um, yes. So this is a 68 inch, 68 stitch count rather, but it's still in two and a half millimeter needles. These are the carbons. I still use carbons for socks. They've not worn out yet. I've still got a few. Um, I think I've got enough four pairs of socks on the go. But I've only got one pair of socks. I really need to cast on myself some socks. Now, if I swizzle my chair that way, you can see this cubby here, that's all sock yarn. So the front ones are all um, commercial. And then all the rest in there with the exception of the jinx, which is down there, there's two little balls next to each other because I divided that in half for something else. Um, it's all pre-caked, ready to go. So I can just go, I fancy casting on that one and it's good to go. Clever, you see, because I know I want to have more socks. So, so that is Abby's socks. And I promised I would get them finished for Christmas. So there we go. Right, that can go down there. Um... Next up is a project that you guys haven't seen for a while because I haven't been working on it. And I picked it up this morning and I put around in the sleeve and I was like, why have I not been working on this? And it is the... Um, sorry, distracted kids walking down the road. It's the Petite Knits and it's No Frill Sweater. So I'm on the sleeves for this. And I'm going to pull it out. So I'm using Berger de France Angel in the Parve colourway. And my own Puro Yarns in the Witch's Cat colourway. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Upside down and back to front. Well done. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Can you tell? Can you tell I haven't done this for a couple of months? I'm so out of practice. So here is... My jumper so far. Now, if I move the project bag, oops, down there. See, so it goes just past my belt, halfway down my my jeans. Not that you can see because I'm wearing a long cardigan. So yes, there it is. And I've got the bat on the front here. Isn't that so cute? I love bats. I'm using the recommended needle sizes, but. I'm, although these are on Magic Loop, I'm not doing Magic Loop on the sleeves. I'm using DP, DPNs. Um, so my sleeves are on 4mm. And I have got, I think, this plus one more skein left. Um, so I have plenty. And what I'm tempted to do, um, if I have enough of the angel, the fluffy yarn left, the mohair yarn left, if I'm feeling torturous to myself is to undo this ribbing at the bottom knit another couple of inches and then do the ribbing again but we'll see because I really want to have this finished because it suddenly got cold here like really cold it was okay so it's England you know it's not New York America or whatever but it was zero degrees last night and there was frost it was cold <laughs> Now normally it gets cold the last week of October, but this year we've had we've had a couple of weeks, you know, lay where it's been warm, it's been sunny, it's not been freezing cold. No. 
today whew, it was cold heating went on so let's put that away so i really really want to get that finished preferably before december but we'll see because i have another garment that i have to get finished by the first of december now if you've been watching for a while you know that um we are doing a cal so cure yarns and the yarn and yarns podcast with angela hi Ange. um we are doing a joint cal for the mount pleasant which is this so i'm showing you the two it's the same jumper on two different sizes just with different ease so i went for this style well, i sort of went a little bit more than that actually i'll show you the main picture if I can find it. There we go. That is the main picture. Now I'm using, for mine, I'm using Dark Adrenaline, which is another Curie Yarns colourway because I absolutely love it. And thank you to everyone that's been ordering it, even though I've not been podcasting. I really appreciate it. Um, so it is this. So it's grey with sort of chestnut and violet, bits of pink. It's absolutely stunning. Okay, so this on marine and nylon. Um, loads of kids go past my house. I'm really sorry, it's very distracting. So, I am tangled up on the spider stitch marker. Hold on, because the legs keep catching everything. Okay, so... Now, I can't remember last time I recorded if I showed this or not. But I know that a couple of weeks ago I moved the marker just in case. Because I thought, oh, I'll record. But I don't know if it was because I was planning. I don't know. Anyway, so it has grown I'm just trying to get my nails on, that much. So in the pattern it says to knit this bit, the lace edging, which is absolutely stunning. And then do... It until it's or knit it straight till it's nine inches and then you do the sleeves no i'm doing my 15 inches because that is the length of jump that i like i'm sticking with the rest of the pattern as is it will be exactly as written for the rest of it just not the length so if i showed this to you on the 13th of september um that's probably where no i was down here i'd still done that so then when I went to record last, I'd moved my marker up. And then since then, so let's see, two weeks, three weeks ago, I've done all this since. Because it's just round and round and round. And I do this each morning. So I've got my little pumpkin here. And my little spider. And that spider, as lovely as it is, after I've finished using it for this project, it's been changed to a progress, a progress keeper instead. Because... It will not stop getting tangled up in my stitches and my yarn because of all these little leggies. So that is half and that's half. So I'm alternating skeins and even still you can tell they're the same dialogue because it's got this flash going through but I actually really like it. It's going to look really pretty when it's finished. So it has got I think another inch and a half before it's at the bit where you start changing the pattern for the arms or whatever. And this one, again, I'm using the recommended needle size, so i got gauge. Uh, it's not written there. I'm going to have to look at the pattern, because it's worn off. That's the only, well, one of the problems with um, carbons is that the, the sizing comes off. So I'm using, for the body, I'm using three and a half millimeter needles so, yes. okay so um like i said neve has just come home i'm at the end of that bit so i will pause here and come back once i've got her a snack and a cuppa okay right i'm back hi so i have got neve a cup of tea and a snack so i can now finish recording the podcast so what I failed to mention earlier was I'm actually doing a crochet project. Now I have to talk a bit quieter because she's just along the hallway, just for a minute. 
because this is Neve's Christmas present. Now, if you watched last time, I had started making her a crochet blanket for her bedroom. Well, um, I'm using this Karen Simply Soft. It's 100% acrylic and I'm using four colours, five colours, four blues and the grey. So these three. And then there's also, I'll just show you on the blanket, it'll be easier. That's the back, this is the front. So it is the dark blue, medium blue, aqua blue and pale blue. And it's all surrounded by these grey. So it is, 12 across and it's going to be 24 down so it is diagonal well the pieces will be diagonally and I've drawn it all out and I've done it on uh, square paper and I've coloured in each square and as I do it I cross it out now my challenge to myself is to get this done for Neve by Christmas um, I need to do at least um, five squares a day and get them attached but I can do that, that's fine. Um, I did, um, last night I, I attached, well yesterday morning I attached three, this morning I attached four, and I crocheted some more squares last night. I am gonna have to go back and get some more yarn, I am in no doubt, I have no doubt in my mind even, because there isn't enough yarn to make this blanket with what I have here. So these are my four colours. They're in an organza bag. But those are my four colours with this grey. And then I'm not sure whether or not I should do an edge on it. Um, I don't know. If I do, it will just simply be a traditional crochet granny stripe type edge. Um, that's Kira texting me. <laughs> um, just as a border to hold it all together and you know make it neat and tidy. We'll see. So that I might be um, kicking myself come Christmas Eve when I've probably got about three rows left to do. But I've decided to do this, so it's my own fault, etc. So. Oh, no, that needs to come next. And then those, and then this. So that's my crochet project at the moment. I'm not doing my other crochet project at the moment, my other blankets, um, purely because I've decided that this needs to be a priority because this is going to be her main present. Pop that on the basket there. Right, so, um, thank you for staying with me this long. Um, I am now going to talk about um, the shop update for tonight and uh, hopefully it'll be up at six o'clock. Um, if not, it'll be seven o'clock. Um, I was going to show you fabrics, etc, but I'm just not going to have time. Um, so, um, I will show you this beauty next week. This is deliberately in this bag so you can't quite see it. Um, one of my friends, Chantal, did a sample on it using some of my yarns. Um, in the, it's the Blooming Texture Shawl using lithium in this moment. Um, but that's something to show you next week. As well as fabric stash and everything else. Because, I mean, I ordered because I'm getting on so well with my sewing, I ordered another box of zips. A box full of zips. That's saying something, isn't it? Oh, yes. Um, so I have got these beauties here going in the shop tonight. So, um, do it that way. I have got three sizes of... Um, zipped project bags and two sizes of drawstring bags but there won't be any drawstring bags tonight um, because I still need to thread them 
put the drawstrings through and I don't want to rush that. So this is my largest one, this is a sweater bag. I've got a blurry window. Um, so that's this size. Now I drafted these patterns myself and I love it. I test knit the pattern. I took um, one of the bags to London and back to use for knitting and then thought, oh yes, that's perfect. Because I went to London, not this Tuesday, it was, oh gosh, 22nd or 23rd, the Tuesday of half term. I went to Loop London and then I went to Cyberdog. Um, I might put those videos on the end just so you can sort of see, oh, it was amazing. I love. I will put those videos on at the end. Hmm? I love it. So, back to the bags. So they are. This one is uh, this beautiful skull and filigree uh, canvas, and then inside is black canvas. It's very deep. Um. So I have got one of this size this week. There'll be another one next week, but in different fabric. Zips, and they've all got these handles. So you can, she says, hitting herself in the face with it, like you do. Carry it like that if you want to. So I've got one big one. And then I've got one, two, two, in this size, so the medium size. So I've got Musical Cats, which again has got the black canvas lining. And then I've got a medium skull bag, same lining. And then just for a bit of fun, there's this one, which doesn't have a, a, a wrist strap, but it is just for fun. So this is one of my Halloween ones because I was going to a shop update for Halloween but then I was like it's always Halloween it says eat drink and be scary Ta -da! and this one has got purple canvas lining and then I've got my small ones I've got three for this week so I've got another skull print with the canvas lining. I have got this bird one, which is absolutely beautiful. It's birds with strawberries and polka dots. And this lining is the purple canvas. So they've all got the, fa the main fabric and then I've got some um, fusible interfacing and then they, the lining. And then I've got a sheep one. Now this sheep one, I didn't have enough fabric to do the um, the handle as well, but isn't it beautiful? Now this one, the beige zip, because it matches. And then because the fleece, you've got these grey bubble bits on it, it's got a grey lining. So there. So these ones are my, I say, I say sock sized. But you can easily fit a small shawl or a child's jumper in those. The medium ones are definitely shawl and jumper size. But the big ones, um, you will fit a chunky jumper or a massive shawl or a blanket project in there. Um, I made the massive ones because I was like, I've got three four blankets on the go and only one of them's in a bag this is not okay <laughs> um, so if like me you want to keep your projects together that's ideal um, and then I made quite a lot of notions pouches so see lots we've all got zips now this one I wanted to show you just because this is my sample this one's mine, <laughs> um, because I wanted to see if I could do this as project bags. I do have the fabric cut with zips ready for project bags, but I wanted to see how stable it was without interfacing, with interfacing, and you know if I needed to put something else to stiffen them in, and I do. 
So this one, the other ones will be up in the shop either next week or the week after, but it's purple crushed velvet with this cobweb fabric over the top in black. And it has purple lining. The lining's polyester. Um, just because I thought, oh, soft, you know. Thought a bit of luxury, a bit of luxury. So, there is a cat one with grey lining because you need it to see, you know. And then there's a sheep with cream lining. There is snowflakes with grey. And this one's lovely. This one's linen polka dots and it's got a cream lining. And I've got some squirrels, sort of scandy squirrels with acorns and leaves, which is really cute. And that's also got a cream lining. I've got butterflies. I don't know why. I always go silly when I say butterfly. Like butterflies. Butterflies that flutter by. And that one's actually got a pink lining, just to you know, mix things up a bit. And then I've got two of these bird bags as well. And these are, can I remember? They're grey. So, if you want a project bag that I kept promising, they're here, they're done. Um, I've got about another 50 cut and part sewn because I like to do the sewing bits in batches. Um, there are... A mixture of project bags. Now some of them I've had finished for a while and I've just not put them up in my Etsy shop. And But I will show you those next week. But the majority of my drawstring project bags are black on the outside and then fun on the inside. Because, you know, not everyone's an out and proud knitter and, you know, carrying around their project bags sort or of thing. If you're just carrying a black bag, people ignore you. But also... For the other side, it's like, oh, what's your lining? That has to be a hashtag, what's your lining? <laughs> Brilliant. So, those are the project bags this week and next week. Um, they... Next week, I will also have some Christmas ones. I think I've got eight Christmas... Or is it ten Christmas ones? I think it's ten. Um of my sock sized but drawstring um, and then I've also got fibre next week so if you can see, see oh you can only see this one two across from there I have cubbies full of fibre and I've started dyeing fibre again and it has been an absolute blast but I didn't want to inundate the shop with too much tonight so the shop update for the fibre will be next Friday at 6 o'clock so I think that's about it to check my notes. Yes. Done. Right, sip of tea for me. Have you got a cup of tea? I hope you've had a cup of tea. It's probably been a long one. There we go. So, now onto the bantery bit. General life chit chat. Um, what do you want to know? Do you want me to go back and start doing VKNs on a Friday evening? Because I will, because I love doing them. Um, but getting the word out has been very difficult. So if you want to take part in a VKN, let me know before 6 o'clock on Friday, because it will start at 8 o'clock. Okay. okay. Right. If you would like to sign up for the newsletter, which will have shop news, what's going in the shop, um, there will be a podcast section at the end, um, and just general, you know, bloggy bit in there, what I'm doing, like you know, fabrics have caught my eye and things like that. Sign up. The link is in the uh, Instagram feed. <laughs> if you go onto my Instagram profile at the top and link tree bit, it says newsletter. Go there, sign up. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this week. Please like and subscribe down below because that helps you know spread the word and help more people find me. Um, please go and you know follow me on Instagram. I am 
at Curio Yarns. Please go and join the Facebook group. Um, it is again Curio Yarns over there. Um, there is a page and there is a group. Please join the group. <laughs> the page was set up in error. Yes, I'm that techno, don't you know? I don't have a clue, basically. Not a clue. And someone had to go, uh, you know that's a page, not a group. I was like, uh, and? <laughs> so, um, I will have to love you and leave you. Keep knitting, spinning, crocheting, sewing, all the things that make you happy. And I will see you next Friday. Bye, everyone. <laughs>